Hi guys! Today I'm bringing you my July manga haul. And I went completely crazy this month going to all these used bookstores, um, having some fun. But uh, this actually isn't absolutely everything. Uh, I do still have a few books that are not with me right now. They're in boxes waiting in storage to be put into my new apartment uh, here, like, next week. So, I figure I'll just throw those into my August haul, probably, because that haul's not going to be very big. Uh, this is not a normal thing for me. So, I think August is just going to be, like, four pre-order books. Um, and one of those is going to be quite expensive on its own, so probably not going to be anything outside of that, unless I decide to throw a cheap book or two onto that Amazon order just for the free shipping, but yeah, so, uh, but anyway, without further ado, I thought since I actually waited to do this until I got this package today, uh, from Kinokuniya, the Japanese bookstore that has branches over here, uh, that I would start this video off with an unboxing of my Japanese language manga. So, I don't see people ordering from Kinokuniya a lot, unless they have one in their area, but they do mark up their prices um, to be more similar to what retail manga prices are here, but I find that for some things um, it's just more convenient than going through, like, Amazon Japan or other stores like that. Because you don't have to deal with shipping, and, uh, their service is always really quick and reliable. Um, their website's easy to understand, so I use them for that sometimes. I also don't have to worry about the condition of the books at all, because they always look flawless. So, uh, gonna go ahead and open this. And this should be eight books that I ordered. Their packaging isn't quite as sturdy as Right Stuff's, but it's still pretty good. Um, and here they are, all bubble wrapped. Got the receipt here, and then, oh goodness, <laughs> uh, as you can see, each of the books are individually wrapped, which is nice. Um, so I'm going to start with these, because this is a series that is not available in English at all, but I was eager to... Uh, get it? So I threw it on this order that I knew I would already be getting. Um, and since it's only three volumes long, it wasn't that expensive. And this is... Let's see, get the, or the uh, volumes in the right order. Yurikuma Arashi, which is the manga adaptation of... It's actually not an adaptation, it is was created concurrently with the Yurikuma Arashi anime, which is directed by Kunihiko Ikuhara, who did Revolutionary Girl Utena and Mawaru Penguin Drum. This is his most recent series, and this is the manga that he commissioned by uh, Akiko Morishima, who is a prolific Yuri mangaka and did the character designs for the anime, as well as this manga. Uh, Ikuhara always loves to do, like... I'll show you the individual covers while I'm talking, but... He always likes to do a anime and also commission a manga artist to do a uh, their own take on the premise in manga form at the same time. Uh, he uses it for inspiration. So that was done with Utena. Uh, the manga was done concurrently. This is actually volume three. Uh, and this is two. Um, I like these covers. I love her art. This is going to be my first Akiko Morishima series, so I'm eager to see 
what's different about it from the anime and to check out her works because um, I know she's quite prolific and quite well respected as a nudie mangaka and I just her designs are like super attractive to me <laughs> honestly yeah <laughs> that's the real reason here but uh, what I've heard about the manga adaptation is that it deals more with the adult characters of the series, like the teacher Yuriika, uh, as opposed to the anime, which deals mostly with the teenage characters. And then, let's see if I can get these all in order. <laughs> okay. So, we have volume 8 of Fruits Basket with Kureno and Akito. That's gonna cover volumes, um, gosh, 15 and 16? No. Yes? 15 and 16, I believe. This is volume 9 with Uo and Hana. That's just perfect having them on the same cover. And then we have... Ooh! I really like how Machi looks in her new style, actually. So here's volume 10 with Kakeru and Machi. I actually really like how Machi looks. Um, then we have volume... 11 with Ren, Akito's mother, and uh, Kazuma, or Shisho. And finally, we have... Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, I was wondering what they were going to do for the last volume, because going by the order of the original series, the characters on the front and back should be... Uh, Oh, what's her dad's name? Katsuya? Uh, that's him. And then on the back would be Toru's mother, Kyoko, who was on the last volume of the series, but they already put her on the back of the first volume of these perfect editions. And, um, so I was wondering what they were gonna do if they were, like, gonna leave the back cover blank, but no. <laughs> it's Kyoko as a teenager when she first met Katsuya. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Considering what happens in this volume, that's actually, like, making me super emotional right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look, it's, they've got this color page right in the middle. That's like, oh, I'm, like, so emotional right now. Oh, what's this in the back? Natsuki Takaya long interview. Wow. Okay. Kyoraku Fairu. So they've got all kinds of character information, an interview, a new interview it looks like. Uh, what's this? Comments on... Let's see. Fruits basket lines that you like, and author comments on each of the choices. Wow. And then you got the character files. Uh... There's, like, all kinds of stuff at the end of this. <laughs> this is, like, super exciting to me. You guys don't even know how much I love Fruits Basket. I'm just, like, looking through this, not even talking. It's got all this extra art. Ah, this is so cool. That's awesome. I'm, like, super happy. This, of course... These last five volumes complete the series in Japanese, so I have completed this edition and the series in Japanese. I also have the Tokyo Pop editions in English, so I'm happy to finally have the series in both its original language and in English. Yay! <laughs> I really recommend picking up the new editions from Yen Press. They're very good quality. So, that was my box from Kinokuniya. I encourage you to check out their website and consider ordering uh, Japanese books from them. I just find it really convenient and not having to worry about shipping is really nice. 
Um, and every time I've ordered from them, I've gotten my items very well packaged, and I've never had any problems with that. Uh, next, we are going to get into... This is going to be quite long, because I got a lot of manga. Um, my Sustain the Industry books. So these are new stuff that I bought from Right Stuff, or probably mostly Right Stuff. Maybe a little Barnes & Noble, but... This is one I did not buy. I got it as a birthday present, which was awesome. And uh, this is from Drawn and Quarterly, so we're going in alphabetical order by publisher for this. But uh, I talked about this in my TBR wrap-up, um, so check that out if you want to hear more of my thoughts. But this is The Birth of Kitaro by Shigeru Mizuki. It is uh, a collection of stories from the series Gegege no Kitaro. Uh, basically kind of a best of. It includes popular stories like the story that introduces Neko Musume, some stories with Nezumi Otoko. It, the first story is, of course, as the title suggests, uh, Kitaro's backstory, his origin story, uh, as a yokai boy who was born in a graveyard. So this series is like the sort of original yokai manga. Like any other yokai manga that exists now, you have this series to thank for those series' existence. And it's super fun. It can be creepy. It can be funny. Uh, it can be adventurous. It can be just plain weird. Um, it's a ton of fun. There's a lot of variety in the stories. This is a great collection for people starting out with Kitaro. Um, it has some really great classic stories in it, and it's a nice little book. Um, if you have ever liked any yokai manga, from Natsume's Book of Friends, to Noragami, to Inuyasha, or Kamisama Kiss, then I absolutely recommend checking this out. It's definitely... It, it's great. <laughs> it's a great manga. Um, next is... Kodansha. So this I threw onto an order uh, of new titles because I needed to get up over $50 so I could get free shipping. And I've needed to get this for a while to complete my collection of the series, but this is Maria the Virgin Witch Exhibition. Uh, this is just a collection of short stories involving the characters, but I love those characters so much, and I'm happy to have all of this series. It's only three volumes, uh, not including this, which uh, I haven't read this yet, but I would assume there's no real reason to get this unless you're a big fan of the series. Um, but I absolutely recommend this series. It has a great heroine, great setting in the Hundred Years' War. I would say if you like historical manga like Vinland Saga was the one that I thought of the most while I was reading this. Even though it doesn't have all the, like, blood and guts that Finland Saga does, it has the attention to detail. Uh, it has a lot of magic and witchcraft that is really well-researched based in, you know, actual stories about witches. And it's also, like, a really raunchy sex comedy at the same time. And it's super funny. It is so funny, and it manages to be so without demeaning or degrading or objectifying any of the characters, regardless of gender. Great series. I actually prefer the anime, but the manga is really good too. It's from the creator of Moyashimon, so... Which is also a great series. <laughs> and then we have Volume 2, Omnibus 2 of Princess Jellyfish, covering Volumes 3 and 4 of the series. Uh... This is a great series. This is a wonderful Jose series. Um, great color pages that you get in it. Um, with this release. Yeah. It's really funny. It has a really unique, um, quirky sense of humor. And the way that it portrays the sensitivity and grace, but also the humor and self-awareness, it portrays its nerdy main characters is just so great and I really want to just embody everything that Kurinosuke is um especially his entire closet so I've got a mess going on over here that's fine 
Next we have, also from Kodansha, Volume 1 of Sweetness and Lightning. Um, I already had read this on Crunchyroll Manga, and it's a really sweet series. If you're not watching the anime right now, I implore you to. It's adorable. It's about a this little girl and her father, who, after the death of the mother, are living alone together. And, uh... He doesn't know how to cook at all, so he just brings home cheap bentos every day, and uh, he starts to feel bad that he's just not feeding his daughter well, and he decides that he's going to learn to cook. Um, basically, he's inspired to when he visits a restaurant um, it, that happens to be staffed by the mother. It's owned by the mother of one of his students. He's a teacher, and that student is her. But when he goes, she's the only one there, and the restaurant is actually closed. But she's like, no, come cook with me. And they basically start up these fun cooking nights, because he's just so thrilled to see his daughter happy with what he's made for her. It's really cute. It's so adorable. This is a great volume, too. It's got a nice matte cover, which I always like. Next, we're moving on to Vertical. I've got... Volumes 1 and 2 of Devil's Line. I talked about Volume 1 in my uh, Booktubeathon wrap-up, and uh, I'm enjoying it. It's a fun little vampire series uh, focused on romance primarily. It also has, you know, action in it. Um, I like the main couple quite a bit, and, uh, you know, it's very Tokyo Ghoul-esque, and I love Tokyo Ghoul, so... Yeah, basically it's right up my alley. Um, I saw that it's actually seven volumes and still ongoing in Japan. I at first thought it was going to be a very short series, so I'm a little worried about how this series is going to continue to carry on for so many volumes. I hope that this means they're going to be alternating black and white, because I love when series do that. <laughs> and then we've got... Utsubora, the story of a novelist by Asumiko Nakamura, which is a single volume manga, so this is all there is to it. Um, very interesting Jose manga about, you know, the nature of authorship and plagiarism. Uh, very mysterious, uh, suspenseful, dark, sensual. If you want to hear more about it, again, look to my book, Booktubeathon wrap-up. Uh, and finally, for the new stuff, we have from Yen Press, uh, Volume 4 of Horimiya. This is a very cute shoujo series. Um, they keep getting closer and closer to actually dating, so I'm wondering if this is going to be the volume or if it'll be the next one. <laughs> but it's very cute, very funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, the last book I got new is the first volume of Lisa Lot and Witch's Forest by Natsuki Takaya, who is the creator of Fruits Basket. And this is one of her newer series. This is actually her newest series that is on hiatus in Japan right now because of her health. Um which has been off and on for since she started doing Fruit Basket, so, you know, I hope she's okay. But uh, this is a really cute series. It did remind me of Fruit's Basket a lot. It's about a girl named Lieselot. She's a young noblewoman who moves to a remote land. It calls it to the east of the east of the east. And, uh... She just has her two little, like, child servants, Alto and Anna, with her. They're twins. And, uh, basically, uh, she gets, she hears that there's witches in this forest here to the east of the east of the east. And, uh, when she gets attacked by one one day, she's rescued by a mysterious man named Engetsu, who resembles somebody that she knew in her childhood. Um, and I like her a lot. She is very resourceful. She's, she's got a bit more gumption than Toru, but she's still very sweet and honest. 
Um, she really wants to, like, start a garden, and she's gonna do all this stuff um, in this remote little cottage, but she's terrible at all of it. <laughs> um, I like her servants. I like Engetsu so far. I'm curious to what his deal is. Uh, but it's very sweet, a little melancholy. The series really picked up for me. Uh, towards the end, when you learn the real reason why Lizalot is in this remote land, and the real reason why she left, uh, that was the part that made me think, yeah, I'm gonna be interested in the series, so. I recommend it if you're a fan of Fruits Basket and you like Natsuki Takaya's style, or if you're looking for kind of a cute, slightly melancholy shoujo series. Nice, slightly oversized volume. <coughs> and finally, we're gonna get into my used pickups, and this is where I've got some stuff that I didn't bring with me, so I'll just show that next month. And first, from Tokyo Pop, we've got Volume 7, Volume 9, 9? Yeah, 9. And Volume 10 of Happy Mania by Moyoko Ano. And I actually picked up the first six and Volume 8 from a store earlier. I found it in the clearance rack at Second and Charles for $2 a volume, so I really couldn't pass it up. These were about $3 a volume. Something like that. And, uh, these were from one of the used bookstores here at home that I always have to make a couple trips to whenever I'm here, because they have a great selection and I always want to support them. I also have a ton of credit there, so... Um, yeah, I read, like, the first volume of this before I left, and, uh, it's funny, it's sort of racy, Jose title by Moyoko Ano, who I love from stuff like Sakudan and Buffalo Five Gals and uh, In Clothes Called Fat. So this is a more sort of mainstream, I guess, series from her about a woman who just really, really, really wants a boyfriend. <laughs> um, and uh, But she keeps ending up with sort of the wrong crowd of boys. So she's like, what's wrong? And it's just a really funny series. Uh, definitely aimed more at adult women, which is... Nice. Uh, this is not a manga, but it is the first volume of Kino no Tabi, or Kino's Journey, which is the light novel source material for the Kino's Journey anime series, which I highly recommend. Um, so, as you can see, it's a novel. Um, I actually probably liked the book a little better than the stories that from it that were covered in the anime, just because you get more detail. Um, and I really like the way this was written. It's very sort of slow and methodic, kind of hypnotic, I guess. Tender, bittersweet, and haunting. That is true. Thank you for that description, Tokyo Pop. That is what, how I would describe this. I think this is the only book in the series that was ever released in English, though, which is kind of a bummer. Uh... The rest are, let's see, I've got a couple Viz books, and then I think I'm going to finish with this, the most exciting thing I found, even though it's out of alphabetical order. <laughs> so the Viz books I got were All My Darling Daughters by Fumi Yoshinaga, which I've been wanting to read forever. It's a series of short stories about mother-daughter relationships by one of my favorite manga creators, Fumi Yoshinaga, so I'm... Super excited to read this. And then I also got volume 5 of Fushigi Yugi Genbu Kaiden, which I've sort of been picking up as I find it. Um, this is a series I really enjoy. If you like stuff like Yona of the Dawn, um, the Twelve Kingdoms, that kind of thing, uh, I would recommend checking this out. I would not recommend checking out the original Fushigi Yugi, um, unless you're into, like, masochism, but <laughs> I would recommend the prequel manga, which is newer, and in my opinion, a lot better. The final thing I'm going to show you is the most exciting thing that I found. 
This is from that used bookstore here in my parents' town. I was so thrilled to find these. These are from Vertical. I have volume one, volume two, and volume three of Tutera, and that is all of the series, the entire thing, all in one go, for a great price that I actually didn't even have to pay because it was from a store I had so much credit at. And, uh, yeah, I'm so happy this is so out of print right now. <laughs> but, uh, this series is a space opera by Keiko Takemiya, one of the most prominent members of the Year 24 group of shoujo mangaka from the 1970s. Of course, I'm a big fan of Year 24, and I've been trying to fill out my collection of them. I've already read this uh, quite a while ago from the library, but I'm so excited to be able to read it again and say that it is mine. And these are in excellent condition as well. I don't even know if the person who owned them previously even bothered to read them, because they're so, like white, there's not even any bow bowing going on, bowing, whatever. <laughs> These are beautiful books, so that is so exciting. And uh, yeah, that is my haul for July 2016. Uh, tell me what you think, guys, what you've gotten this month, um, what here is interesting to you, and uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.